While we continue to forge our way in these unprecedented times, we still have much to be grateful for. And on this World Gratitude Day, remember that being thankful almost always creates positive thinking, which puts you in line to achieving positive outcomes. Hello there. Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thank you so much for being here. News you can use comes your way right after this break. The following is brought to you by the Office of the Prime Minister. Our children have been out of school for a year and a half. The impact on their education is significant and it will be long lasting. As a responsible government, we cannot place the education of your children, our children, at risk. There is a ray of hope and that hope comes in the form of the vaccine. The proceeding was brought to you by the Office of the Prime Minister. Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, September 21. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs says it has engaged the UK government at the technical level following confirmation that the vaccination status of Jamaican nationals is not being recognized in the United Kingdom. In a statement, Portfolio Minister Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith said Jamaican nationals have already been impacted by this development, noting that the matter has also been brought to the attention of CARICOM for action. Minister Johnson-Smith says the matter will be raised again in the upcoming bilateral meeting with the UK at the United Nations General Assembly this week. The Foreign Affairs Minister says it's also understood that in addition to their stoplight system, where Jamaica is given an amber rating, the UK has only recognized the vaccination programs of a few countries. She says the stoplight travel status is due to Jamaica's vaccination numbers, hospitalizations, variants and related considerations in the country. According to Minister Johnson-Smith, an expanded UK list of programs has already been determined for October. And while the process is relatively new, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has requested data from the Ministry of Health and Wellness to assist the UK government in the review of Jamaica's vaccination program. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health and Wellness is urging Jamaicans who have taken the first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine to take the second and final dose. According to the ministry, persons are not fully vaccinated and will not receive the maximum benefit of taking the AstraZeneca vaccine until they have received the two doses. The benefits include a reduction in the risk of severe illness, hospitalization and or death from contracting COVID-19. Persons are asked to check their vaccination card and make an appointment at moh.gov.jm or 8881LOVE. Up to 5 p.m. on September 20, approximately 709,444 doses of COVID-19 vaccines were administered. Of that number, 490,953 were first doses, 196,216 second doses, while 22,275 were the single-dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The Ministry of Health is reminding Jamaicans, including those who have been vaccinated, to continue their infection prevention and control measures, namely mask wearing, maintaining physical distance and frequent hand washing or sanitizing. As of September 20, the island recorded 374 new COVID-19 infections and confirmed six deaths, moving the total number of cases to 80,780 and the death toll to 1,800. In other news, the Ministry of Education says it will be continuing its targeted community intervention plan this school year. The aim is to reach students who are not engaged through any of the remote learning modalities. All our children should be able to have access to the teaching and learning that is being delivered on at least one of the various platforms. Our yard-by-yard -yard or door-to-door -door visits by our intervention officers will ensure that no child falls through the system. Minister Williams says the intervention was successfully rolled out last year and the ministry was able to connect with 2,300 students. Teachers and guidance counsellors were sent out into communities to reach students and engage with them in small groups of five for one and a half hours, three days per week. Prime Minister Andrew Holness handed over 40 tablets and a printer to the Haile Selassie High School to help in bringing more students into the online space. The tablets are a donation from the diaspora in New York, while the printer is from the Prime Minister's Positive Jamaica Foundation. Mr. Holness says the devices will assist with online teaching and learning, as well as reduce the cost of outsourced printing by the school. I hope that this will help you in 
printing your worksheets and other material to distribute to your students. The handover took place on Friday during the Prime Minister's vaccine mobilization and public education campaign in Caribbean Palms. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith says public education is critical to understanding the terms of sexual harassment as the country seeks to approve and implement the bill. Opening the debate on Friday in the Senate, she said many people who do not fully understand the term often equate it to flirtation. She further explained that the legislation is not about emasculating men or removing the ability to flirt or start new relationships. It won't stop women who like to flirt from flirting and it won't stop women who like you from giving you the signal so you know you can make a move. It is about the ones who don't want it. Quite simply do not. It is about knowing that if you are in a workplace or an institution for a purpose or seeking quiet accommodation, enjoyment of your accommodation, you will be protected against unwanted sexual advances. Senator Johnson-Smith says figures from the Pilot Women's Health Survey 2016 indicated that 24% of Jamaican women reported being sexually harassed during their lifetime. This, she says, represents one in four women who report, stating that the figure is likely higher considering unreported cases. Where the data exists, however, the evidence is clear that exposure to sexual harassment leads to physical, physiological and professional consequences for individuals. Anger, stress, feelings of powerlessness, degradation, depression, anxiety, and increased alcohol use are all among the outcomes documented of sexual harassment. The Sexual Harassment Protection and Prevention Bill contains provisions for dealing with sexual harassment in the workplace, schools, correctional institutions, places of safety, nursing homes, medical and psychiatric facilities, among other places. The debate in the Senate on the Sexual Harassment Protection and Prevention Act will continue on October 1. And finally, Minister of Housing and Urban Renewal Pernell Charles Junis says government is working on a long-term solution for the flooding challenge in Halls Hall, Clarendon. Residents of the area were severely impacted by the recent heavy rains. While touring the area recently, Minister Charles said his ministry is seeking to create a sustainable solution for the community. A long-term plan is being worked on, however, in the interim, a short-term solution is being explored, which could possibly include expanding the drainage in the area and connecting it to the main. The second proposal that has been made is for the relocation of some of the units here and excavation of this area so it becomes a more a, a larger, natural, so Minister Charles says the measures are being undertaken in collaboration with the Clarendon Municipal Corporation and the National Works Agency. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thanks for watching. I am Delroy Chuck, Minister of Justice. And with the support of the European Union, we intend to build a first-class justice system. The contribution of the European Union to the Jamaica justice system is enormous. We believe that this partnership with the European Union has been beneficial to Jamaica. And we hope that further assessment will demonstrate that the partnership between the European Union and Jamaica is one that has not only been game-changing, but will continue in the years ahead. The most significant achievement, in my opinion, was the Court of Appeal. Before the Court of Appeal was rebuilt, only seven judges could have been appointed. Now we can appoint 12 judges plus the president of the court and this will ensure that at that level in the Court of Appeal cases will move expeditiously. It will set the tone for how we engage in backlog reduction. Here's an update on the most recent developments coming out of the office of the Prime Minister.
Prime Minister unveils updated COVID-19 containment measures, continues his vaccination mobilization tour, and appoints temporary agriculture and fisheries minister. You're watching Jamaica House Weekly. I'm Anthony Morgan. The cabinet met on Monday and decided on the following new measures, effective from Saturday, September 18, until October 28, 2021. Prime Minister Andrew Holness, during last Wednesday's sitting of the House of Representatives, no movement days will now be on Sundays and will include National Heroes Day on Monday, October 18. Weekday curfew hours are now at 8 p.m. and 6 p.m. on Saturdays. The epidemiologists and other experts at the Ministry of Health, having reviewed the data, and we are now starting to examine transportation in greater detail, took the view that 8 o'clock is a better time to allow for the clearing of congestion um, and to reduce the crushing of persons trying to get onto public transportation to get home. Certain vaccination sites will remain open on the no movement days and persons who wish to receive the vaccine will be allowed to do so. Businesses and delivery operators registered on the e-commerce national delivery system ends will be able to operate after curfew hours until midnight and on no movement days. As for other containment measures, the public gathering limit remains at 10 persons, while only 20 persons are allowed to physically attend places of worship, funerals, weddings and annual general meetings. Public entities will only be allowed virtual events and burials will not be permitted on public holidays. And the existing work-from-home arrangement stipulated for the public sector has been extended to October 28. Wednesday also saw the Prime Minister temporarily appointing Industry and Commerce Minister Audley Shaw as the new Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries. The additional responsibilities were given following the resignation of former Minister Floyd Green. Mr. Holness says Minister Shaw will ensure that all current programs of work and policy direction are maintained to yield the maximum benefits to farmers and the local agricultural sector. Prime Minister Andrew Holness continued his vaccine mobilization and public education campaign this past week. On Wednesday, he visited East Kingston and Port Royal, Manchester on Thursday, and by Friday he was back in the corporate area visiting Southwest St. Andrew. Mr. Holness urged persons to take the first available vaccine. We can use our own reasoning and our own good judgment and be proactive in our own benefit and take the vaccine. We are now beginning to realize how serious it is. But we shouldn't wait until it reaches so close. What we should be doing is using our own sense of what is what we should be calling good judgment. The Prime Minister also revealed that 55 additional fixed vaccination sites have been established across the island. This, he says, will make it easier for persons to access vaccines in their communities. Prime Minister Andrew Holness used his vaccination mobilization tour to distribute tablets and printers to schools in the areas visited. The devices were donated through the One Laptop or Tablet Per Child initiative and Mr. Holness's Positive Jamaica Foundation. Each constituency visited received 40 tablets and a multipurpose printer. These devices have replaced pen and paper, by and large. It, this is the pen and paper of today. And uh, we need to have this device, this equipment, in the hands of all Jamaican students. Whether or not they are going to be doing online learning, or face-to-face -face learning. And that's how we close out Jamaica House Weekly. Be sure to join us next time for more of the news stories coming out of the office of the Prime Minister. It's absolutely critical that we receive the vaccines. You will see hospitalizations and indeed deaths likely come down. And so there is a lot of value to be gained by getting as many vulnerables on board as possible. So tell your mothers, tell your aunts, 
listen out for yourselves if you're over 60 and take the vax because the vax is what will help you to guard against the COVID virus and indeed help your relatives, your friends, those who you come in contact with for the same benefit. We are an exceptional nation, and as we join hundreds of countries around the globe to network and engage in cultural diplomacy at World Expo 2020, it comes as no surprise that Jamaica has been singled out for having one of the coolest pavilions at the event. Pussbrook Coconut in a Jamaica eye. How else can we define the audacity of a tiny nation that time and again not only stands with the big players, but surpasses them? After dominating the Tokyo Olympic 2020 Games in athletics and in decorating our chests at the Diamond League Games, here we are on another world stage saying boldly, I am here. Sounds cliche, but it's true. We're little but with Talawa. And so, as 191 countries around the globe congregate for World Expo 2020 in Dubai, it's no surprise that Jamaica has been highlighted among the 13 coolest pavilions. The fact that Time of Dubai has selected Jamaica as one of the coolest kids on the block, so to speak, is really, really refreshing for us. I'm very thrilled that Jamaica was selected in this and presented in this article. We have been trying to make sure that even though Jamaica is a small island state, so to speak, that our voice is heard loud and clear across the world. What is even more impressive is the fact that this is Jamaica's first time participating in the Expo with its own pavilion. The genesis of the pavilion is that Jamaica moves the world and connects the world. When you see the pavilion, there are bold pictures of people outside and, and scenes of Jamaica. And then when you get on the inside now, it's like a, a spontaneous party, as you say, a block party, but with containers from all over the world, because we have influence. We are influencing quite a bit of international City. Jamaica's pavilion is a gift from the United Arab Emirates with specific designs from Team Jamaica. These include zones dedicated to our cultural heritage, prowess in sport and business, and access to some real reggae music. We actually have a music student. I think that is what really captured the time out attention because they came, came into this space and like, but we can listen to Jamaican music, we can create our own playlist and, you know, have a vibe of our own. World Expo provides an international stage for countries to engage in cultural diplomacy and interact with the host country, other participants, potential tourists, trade partners and investors. World Expo 2020 Dubai will be held October 1, 2021 to March 31, 2022 under the theme Connecting Minds, Creating the Future. Many wish they could visit our shores. We live where they vacation. Brand Jamaica beckons all from the four corners of the earth. Well, as a Jamaican, um, I have great pride in selling it. 
um, you know, your pride, your, your pride that you sell Jamaica with is something that it rolls off. Jamaica has so much to offer, and every time I have the privilege of bringing an executive down to Jamaica, an executive from an airline or a, a tour operator or a travel agency, and you take them across the country, you know, the pride that they said, wow, I can't imagine, especially when it's their first time. Wow, I love this. Build it. Cherish it. Our wealth is Brand Jamaica. Veronica Campbell Brown is a household name, an athlete extraordinaire whose drive and commitment are etched in Jamaica's history. In the upcoming feature, we showcase how this recently retired Jamaican track and field sprinter's contributions have helped to build Brand Jamaica. She is an eight-time Olympic medalist who has won three gold medals at the Olympics and three at the World Championships. She has in her possession over 50 medals for her outstanding work as an athlete. Her career lasted over two decades and the time has come for her to hang up her spikes. My reaction to Veronica announcing that she's hanging up her spikes and she's retiring brings to mind that Veronica is Jamaica's most decorated female athlete and that we cannot praise her enough for her outstanding performance as an athlete. Veronica Campbell Brown is a Jamaican track and field sprinter who specializes in the 100 and 200 meters. Her personal best of 10.76 seconds in the 100 meters makes her one of the top 10 fastest female athletes in the world and fourth fastest among Jamaican women. The athlete, whose career started at the Ver Technical High School in Clarendon, hails from the rural community of Clarkstown in Trelawney. At the age of 22, she represented Jamaica at the 2004 Athens Olympics, winning gold in the 200 meters. Her win made her the first Jamaican and Caribbean woman in the history of the Games to win a sprint Olympic title. VCB is a very warm individual, a humble individual. I mean, in, in, regardless of all the successes that she has had as an athlete, she was never spoiled. She never behaved like a prima donna. She's just humble, warm, and, and very Christian-like in her approach. She is always uh, speaking about praying and, and giving thanks. And I think she's a, a great example. Great example as a Jamaican woman, and a Jamaican woman who has succeeded through hard work and dedication. I really, really wish her well. In 2019, VCB, as many affectionately call her, was honored by the government of Jamaica for her stellar work as an athlete. A statue of Veronica was commissioned along with statues of uh, Usain Bolt, Asafa Powell, Shelley and Fraser as Jamaica's tangible recognition of her performance. And it is now proudly erected in Statue Park in the National Stadium Complex. And uh, further to that, we renamed the Troy Primary School as the Veronica Campbell uh, Brown uh, Primary School. The 39-year-old Olympian wife and mother says she will now turn her focus to parenting and her entrepreneurial and charity ventures such as the VCB Foundation. I wish her well in her retirement. I wish her success in her venture, business venture, uh, in working on her brand and her merchandising and that she will be able to market herself as effectively as she has done to make her proud as an athlete.
I do to stay safe in this pandemic? This pandemic has been here for over a year and you know, it makes no sense we sit and we sulk. So what I do is I always ensure that I wear my mask. Anywhere that I'm going, I have to have it. And I also enter at a social distance and I try my best to stay home when I can. Even though we're well won't go back outside, we have to keep ourselves and our family members safe and friends. So yeah, sanitize, wear my mask, social distance and stay inside. One of the things that um, I'm doing to stay safe during this pandemic is really limiting places I go. So if it's not essential, I'm not going anywhere. You know, so like staying home more. Also like consistently washing my hand well it's kind of difficult but i do it as much as i can so washing my hand sanitizing and definitely wearing a mask um also when i get home the first thing i do take off my clothes hit the shower yep because i have to keep the family safe everything that comes through my door um are thoroughly disinfected i don't allow shoes inside my home I don't take visitors unless it's outside in the open air. Whenever I stop or touch items, uh, I ensure that I am sanitized with my sanitizer, which I have in this bottle. Uh, if there's a facility where there is a, a restroom, I ensure that I wash my hands properly. However, after getting home in the evenings, I ensure that I uh, sanitize myself in which uh, I've been a shower before associating with anyone else and I ensure that I have my mask on for sure when I am out there in the street to protect myself and I also ensure that I got my shot to keep myself safe and those around me safe as well. We've come to the end of today's magazine. Thank you so much for your company. Be sure to join us again tomorrow, same time, on this same station, for more interesting features. You can also enjoy content on our website, jis.gov.jm, or our YouTube channel. While you are online, don't forget to send your feedback to jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm and via our social media pages. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Walk good and remember to find one thing you are grateful for every day. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.